And Leica bought out your... So if you go online, you can learn about this if you want to know more about it. In this drawer, here's the manual. And you need to read this manual. And we're going to look at it today. So a grad set, I told you, is a deep freeze. And if you look at this, it tells you that the CT is minus 29 degrees centigrade and the OT is minus 25 degrees centigrade. And it's currently locked. And so this is the panel display that you want to be looking at. Well, so CT stands for chamber temperature. This, if you open it up, if you put your hands in here, put your hands in there, see how cold it is. Okay, so this is the chamber. But there's also an object. This regulates the temperature of the object. So you have the capacity to change this and this. And so where you put that is going to influence uh, how well your sections turn out. Now, uh, for instance, fat will melt at a higher, uh, look, uh, at a high, how are we going to say this? Your fat is going to melt at a higher temperature than, say, something else. So you want to keep it really cold. But you don't want to make it so cold that you're going to get chatter. Right? It'd be like cutting through an ice cube that was too cold and it would go ch -ch 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 -ch. So, knowing the right temperature to cut your specimen at is important. Same thing with you. Now, it turned out that I think this is the temperature and this is where we keep notes in our notebook of what works. So, we record all this data. It's like doing any kind of experiment. You come back next week and you found out that this temperature worked and somebody came and you did a different temperature than Decola and you go, oh man, I don't know what I did. Then you got to rework it all out again. So make sure you record these things as you move along. So same thing as everything. I'll show you the notebooks later. We won't do that now. But there's a notebook where you will do your cutting and your sectioning, and you'll put uh, this is the temperature I cut today, and we'll have a little chart, and you fill it out, and you move on and do some cuts on your tissues. I've already started that because I've already cut some of the tissues that you'll be cutting. Mm -hmm. All right, and then. Uh, to unlock it, there's a wheel. Now this wheel is all uh, broke. See there's a little thing here and since nobody was using I didn't do anything about it. But see, um, that will move at this point and it says it's not locked anymore. But see this thing isn't going to work anymore. With this, it's supposed to go nee, nee, nee. So I just, I just remember at this very moment that this is broken, and we got to get somebody out next week to fix it. What happens is there's a little thing that sticks out here, okay. and uh, when people walk by, they bang it and knock it off. It's happened twice now. I don't know how to fix it, but the guy knows how to fix it. So it looks like for today we're going to have to do it this way. See, this is how we're cutting. And this is silly. There is another way to cut, and that's down here. There's a foot pedal. It's a sewing machine. And it's exactly like a sewing machine. And so if you put this on, you know, how many times you do it, you can do it, okay? So, I'm sorry about this. I totally forgot we weren't using it. I said, oh, I'll do it later. So later has arrived. Um, so that locks it. Now the reason you want to lock it is when your hands are in here, you're working with these guys. And they're just like the razor blades that, uh, you know, people put in uh, their beard trimming thing, but they're worse because they are really, really, really sharp. You don't want to put your fingers down there or be in a position where you're going to cut yourself. And you don't want that thing, cut, you know, cutting things that you don't want it to cut. So you want to lock this when you're not using it so there's no way that that's going to move or do anything. These things are called chucks. And we have different sizes of chucks. Right now I've only got one size in here, but there's other sizes. There's, I believe we own three sizes of chucks in this lab. And so if those chucks aren't the size that you want, up here is a slot.
this is going to be, unfortunately, I mean, you know, it's, uh, that's a little out of order, but I don't know any other way to do it. So in here, there's two boxes, and this is a filter holder, and this is a filter, and we use these to uh, clean up the mess so that if there's any kind of stuff in there that might be contaminated, uh, particularly let's say it was human tissue, we want a way that we can collect this stuff and not get it into the environment, so we use this. So there's a vacuum, and this goes with the vacuum. So when you need to replace these, they're down here in this cupboard. The reason we have two sizes is, if your block is small, you put it on here, and if your block is big, you put it on there. That's why I thought I had an intermediate size. If I find it, I'll bring it up. But I thought I had six of three sizes, but I guess I have six of two sizes. Okay. Now, there's two types of oil. There's tissue block oil. And then there's uh, uh, machine oil. And you can't use machine oil on tissue, and you can't use tissue oil on machines. So I want you to be aware that there's two types of oil. Uh, to refill this little bottle, which we keep here, you use this bottle, Instrumentix. It's called um, for tissue blocks, not machines. And you just pour a little in here so that you always have some tissue block oil. Okay? As long as this oil is clear, it's good. And it is clear. This oil, on the other hand, is in this little bottle. There's more of it. Okay, so here we go. Let's talk about this panel because we're going to be using it. Uh, there's uh, three divisions of things you need to know. This little box has one kind of information, this has another kind of information, and this has another kind of information. All of it is covered in here. So that's why I want you to read this and be aware of what's going on. Uh, this explains what I just went over. It talks about hazards. You can read about it. That. Um, let's talk about this. No, I'm just putting that in. You need to know you're not going to be removing it.
Now, does this tell us how to do, did I save that little thing? Because maybe we can repair this ourselves. Where did it go? Oh. What is this, screw? Was it that white thing? Here we go. Let's move on. So let's start going through it. Here's chamber illumination. Light goes on. Roll button looks like this. What does it do? Status inquiries and pre-selection of variable operating conditions or the menu button. Push the button several times to display the individual menu items. So you just hit this and it'll say fast object freezing. And you can, if you toggle it, you know, you'll get off or on. Okay, if I hit it twice, now it says you can change your object temperature. And to change your object temperature, you would go 1, 2, so now it's minus 28, or you'd go 1, 2, 3, and now it's minus 24. Okay, if you hit it three times, 1, 2, 3, now you can change the chamber temperature. Hit the up key, oops, it, it, it goes off fast. So you can hit it up, or you hit it down, or wherever you want to be, okay? and then just let it go and it's going to stay. So that's what this is for. It's called a roll button because you can, you can transition through all the settings. And that's where you're going to um, set things. Okay, now, here's the arrow buttons. We just went over those. Manual defrost is this guy. That says to activate manual defrosting, it's only operational if the appropriate menu item set temp for the cryo chamber or specimen is selected. Activation of this button will be confirmed by an audible signal. Defrosting will be terminated automatically when the cryo chamber attains minus 5 degrees or the specimen cooling head happens. We're not going to deal with that because it has an automatic um, defrost, but that's what that button is for. So if you hit it, it'll turn on manual. Don't be surprised. Just turn it off again or do something, whatever. Um, key switch. Uh, right here. Hold down for approximately five seconds to disable the use of buttons 22 to 26. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. This group of buttons. Five seconds and you won't be able to use any of those buttons. Protection against unintended modification. I see no reason to use that, but in case somebody does use it, you need to um, realize why you can't do anything. So if you come in here and it looks like this, one, two, three, four, five, and now you do this, oh, and you want to do this, and oh, it's letting me. I'm not trying to hold it down. So we're checking everything out, make sure it's working. Okay, let's go. All right. The reason I'm showing you this is when the power goes out. Sometimes it looks like that, and you're going to come in here and say, well, I don't know what to do, and it's happened to me a couple times, and I always forget what I need to do. To enable it, just hit this. Now you can use it again. Okay. All right? All of this is in the manual. So now we know these keys and this key. So now we're going to go to the display readings, and this will explain everything that you see. Chamber temperature, hand wheel is locked, specimen stop position, if that's noted, is right here, um, and so forth. And this little thing right here, section counter activated with up and down, and it's cleared with the lock key. So if you want to keep track of your section numbers, you can use that. If you don't, you can, I guess, get rid of it here. I've never really done this, but let's just try it. How do we get rid of it? It can be clear. So yeah, so here, isn't that that picture? Yeah. Or is that? But you have to have a number, right? We can't clear it. That's, oh, that cleared it. 
what is the double double? That means on, and this means okay. So I don't know why it says that. Anyway, I don't use that, but that's what that means. If you want to use this, if you want to use that thing, I guess to turn it on, you would hit this, right? It's on now. Because on means the double star. Yeah, but the little thing that's counting isn't on there for you to look at. There we go. Poke it around, and apparently, when you cut the sections, if you want this to keep track of your section, mm -hmm. it'll keep track of your section. I don't use it, but that's what it's for if you want to use it, okay? Um, what do I do? Uh, we put our section numbers on each slide so I know what section number they are. But that would be useful to somebody who doesn't, who just wants to cut through and know whether they cut 300 sections or not. You wouldn't have to think about whether I cut 300 or not. Then do it for you. Okay, so that's what that's for. Um, this was going to tell you your home position. Home position has to do with um, this uh, uh, p this uh, specimen holder position down here. Because what's going to do is you can move that back to what's called a home position, and then you start moving it up from here to cut. Okay? It'll only go so far this way and so far that way. So home is when you got it all the way back. You'll see that in a minute. Um, this will tell you if motorized sectioning is on. In other words, maybe you let this thing go on its own, and it's just going to go, doom, doom, doom. You won't have any control. I've never done that because I don't have the confidence in the sections that I'm thinking the robot can do it without my help. OK. I think we're done with that thing. Now we're going to start with module A, module B, module C. Over here. So module A consists of the two control buttons to start and stop motorized sectioning and the corresponding LED. Okay, so what this means is if you select this one, Now, see that's selected, so this has to be in the run position. And if I select this, what's going to happen is it is not going to work with that thing. The automatic is not run enable. Let's try that. So if it were working, what would happen is it would go down and cut, come back up and keep cutting. We just keep cutting like that. On the other hand, if you pick this one, which is one we use more often, it goes down and cuts and comebacks up and cuts. It'll cut, I think, twice or something like that. This one is the one we use most often because it goes down, comes up, and waits. It goes down, comes up, and waits. And then you have more control of it. That's what that's all about. And this one gives you an idea of how fast it's going to do that. So if it's going, if you want it to go slow, you put it down here and it'll go, mm -hmm. If you put it up here, it's going to go now, 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 now. Okay? So that's the control button for that. So that's motorized. Module B includes the controls and indications for the electric course piece, the trim function for specimen trimming, and the pre selector buttons for the trim step, and an indication for the selected trimming thickness. So what you use this for is, let's say you put your block on for the first time and you're going to have to cut through that excess OCT that you use to cover the specimen. So you're going to have to cut through all that in order to get to where you want to start. 
this makes things go faster because you can trim and you can say I'm going to cut 50 micrometer sections at a time and, and you're just going to go. What these buttons do is, if it will work now, this should take you, this uh, thing, all the way back to the home position. You see it moving? Did I stop something here? Turn off motorized. I have a good luck with this today, huh? Okay. Oh, it's going now. Now, is it moving? Sometimes you can't see it moving. Now, maybe it's all the way back to as far as it can go. Let's try the other direction. Is it? This should be working better than it is. Um, looks like I need a service call. Hmm. Hmm. Well, that's a bummer. Yeah. You gonna be able to cut anything today? Um, maybe not. This is uh, motorized. This is in operation. And so, well, can we stop this? See, I've never had this problem. It's really quite easy to use this machine. But something is definitely not working. The temperature's changing. Does, does that have anything to do with oh, it? I changed the temperature, right? I changed it to minus 28 and minus 23 when I was pushing all the buttons, right? Mm -hmm. So, does it have to change temperature? All no, the you can do this. It doesn't matter. Is this starting to go down? Yeah. Oh, that's weird. Oh, it's okay. It's just waffling. All right. Well, anyway, if you were able to do it, that's what that's for. This moves it to the back position. This moves it to the full forward position. And this moves it little ways, little ways. That's all that's about. And trim function, uh, maybe that's why it's not working. I've got it on trim. Let's try this again. There you go. Can you see it moving? Oh, okay. Well, good. Is it moving? It was moving a little bit. It may be all the way back. See, it's all the way back. It's in home. And see that? Uh -huh. Yes. All right. So I didn't realize I still had trim on. Okay. Now let's go the other way. Now it should come forward. Unless it's not all... It should be home. That's what seems to be the problem. I'm not responding to the touch here. All right, go. I want to see it come forward, then I'll really believe it's working. It's not at home anymore. Yeah, well, then it's moving. The way you can tell is the distance between here and here should change to your eye. I haven't seen it moving, but based it's on this, it says it's moving. It doesn't say it's home anymore. But this light's not on, which bothers me. I can hear something, though. Do it again. Yeah, I can hear something. When you push the button. Well, maybe it is moving very slowly.
well, we'll assume it's doing it now.